Welcome back Happy Hookers. So today I'm going to show you how to create a fringe for your coasters or your um, table centerpieces or anything really. Um, it's a really simple effective way to add a fringe and it's really perfect for the, um, the flat circle coasters. Now this is actually one that I've created using single crochet and I've crocheted this in a spiral um, using the standard increase method and I'll pop a link um, above to um, a flat circle coaster pattern that uses the double crochet. So the best way to add your fringe is to think about the size that you would like your um, fringe to be. Now I've selected this, I've got a ruler here, I think it's just over an inch so oh, good start dropping my ruler. Next thing my cats will be coming in trying to eat the fringe. Um, so this is about say three and a half so it's actually a little bit over an inch, three and a half to four um, on the fringe. The best thing to do is to find something like a photo frame or a notebook or something that's roughly just over two times your fringe size. So say if our fringe is four, we want four, four, and then a little bit extra um, for slippage and cutting off. So how I do this is it's simply a case of taking your ball of yarn and it's really easy in fact let me do it this way because I'm going to wrap it around the top and then just wrap it around like this wrapping it around the frame over and over and over until you've got quite a few pieces and then what you can do is snip it off and then slip off the frame and what you've got is you've got quite a few loops here and then it's just a case of taking your scissors like so, snipping through one end and then taking your scissors and snipping through the other end and then you roughly have lots of pieces all the same size and it saves you having to get your ruler and cut each one individually. Now each of these fringe sections if you like is made up of two of these per crochet stitch. So hang on a minute, let me just get you back in the centre, two of these. So what I like to do for speed is I take a little bit of time and I lay them all out so they've got nice little sections of two. There we go, so we'll just do a couple there. Let me get rid of these. Now I crocheted this using a five millimetre hook. Well, I'm actually going to use a six millimeter hook to pull them through because I find that I can nicely get hold of both of them and I can also nicely get hold of all four of them should I need to, well I do need to. So each of these stitches along here, we take a look, we're going to place two of these. So if we grab them in the center and we pull them through and this is where we want to make sure that they're roughly in the center we're pulling through and you can see now why we've added those extra bits on because already now I've got some at different lengths and then what I would do is give yourself quite a large loop and then I would gently when I say gently don't just pop that and pull it through like this now if you struggle you can and then we pull it tight if you struggle you can use your fingers so I'll show you that again we're going to push that through take a piece roughly in the center pull it through the center give yourself a big enough loop and if you like you can pop your fingers into it like that and pull it through and as you can see look at that one I mean I've got some all look at that all different lengths now the best case scenario is as long as your shortest one is roughly the size or the length rather of your piece and as you can see if you look at that that shortest one's not far off so you really can see how probably I've gone three times what I want the fringe to be now there's a couple of different ways you can do this I've chosen to go from the front which provides a edging which looks very almost cord like because it fits very nicely and almost mimics my single crochet if you were to do it on the reverse so you were to go this way 
well not this way yes if you were to pull them through this way what you would end up with is actually a finish that gives us like a little edging stitch and if that's something that you quite like the look of all you simply need to do is rather than going through this way we would go through this way and do exactly the same thing we would place them in this way round And then we would end up with that kind of crossbar section there on the front but I'm going to undo that one because I don't want to do that so I would treat this as kind of a little bit of a, um, a factory line I would cut quite a few lay them all out in twos get them all I would probably do a good section of you know pulling through and then we get to do the really fun fringe part where we split them apart can you see here I haven't given myself quite enough room to pull through so all I'm doing is just gently teasing it through so that I can pull that tight so once you've done a few the best way to fringe is with a comb now I've tried this with two types of combs I have a comb here that's quite a small um, bristle comb and I thought that this would actually be the best but it does actually almost tug on the individual strands, these small strands. So I then moved to a comb that was a little bit wider teeth. And if I just show you those, I found that this was actually more effective. And it's simply a case of very gently combing through. Now I wouldn't hold it perpendicular to it and try and drag down. I would actually hold it at an angle like this so that I'm almost doing this. So we're just starting to tease the pieces apart. You see that slowly teasing them and there we go, we're making headway. And then what I would do is I'll flip it over and go from the other side, just start to tease them apart. Now once the strands have slowly become undone, then what you can do is hold it up here and almost try can you see and pull but that's actually quite tight now and I don't want to rip it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it almost at a 45 degree angle and then can you see that's a lot better now and I can actually now successfully comb all the way through which does actually feel really satisfying so you're just dragging at first to pull them apart and then you can flip it the other way to comb through and then it's simply a case of trimming. Now I find the trimming best if you keep it flat on the table and you actually almost use your scissors as if you were using dressmaking shears where you try and keep them along the bottom. Now you're never going to get a perfect, um, you know, perfectly even edge. However, I tend to do that a couple at a time. All you're aiming for is to be roughly in the same area and what you can do then after you've done quite a few is give it another little bit of a become a hairdresser for a day another little bit you can even turn it over give it another little bit can you see there's probably a couple of bits there that don't seem the best give it a rough trim and it does feel incredibly soft um, and very beautiful now this probably only took me about 20 minutes in in the whole time to finish it the great thing is this is actually the end where I fastened it off and I'm actually going to leave that and I'm going to leave it I'm going to I'll probably cut it down to about there I'm going to fringe it along and it will give me an extra piece of fringe um, so that I don't actually have to um, to weave it in so there you go, really, really simple way um, to fringe. All you need is a comb. I mean, you can do them by hand if you want with your fingers, but it is a little bit more time consuming. It's also nowhere near as fun as getting your comb and teasing them out and then giving it a trim. So thank you ever so much for watching. Um, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help support the channel and help me grow and create more content. Um, happy hooking and I'll see you soon. Bye.